And at this time, Pastor Sir, uh, will come forward and preach to us the word of God. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be back with you. Here in Oceanside, good to be home. Yes. Amen. Home is where the Lord wants you. Yes. And we're glad to be here. I'm glad that you're with us. We're going to go ahead and go to our Bible reading tonight. We're going to be in 1 John, the first epistle of John, chapter 5. And I want to read one verse of Scripture. You know what was going on? I thought, man, he, Reverend Torres is taking lessons from Reverend Walker over there. <laughs> the offering. Walker does a lot of that too. He's looking for his own. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, we can have a good time tonight in the house of God. Amen. It's all good. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5, verse 18. It's our text tonight. Let's go ahead and read it. We know that whatsoever is born of God, excuse me. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one touches him not. We want to use this tonight. And we touched on this the other night when we were preaching. Don't worry, I'm not preaching about MC Hammer. Don't touch this. <laughs> but we do want to preach with the help of the Lord about the sweet spot. And let's look to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing. And Reverend Rossi, sir, will you pray, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in the house. We ask you now to help Pastor as he shares what you've laid upon his heart. And Holy Spirit, reach out, touch us in a special way, make us more like Christ. And help us, Lord, to live the glorious life that you prepared for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We used this in preaching uh, the other night, not, just not too long ago. And I do, want, I do want to say that I do appreciate everybody watching stuff and, and uh, taking care of things here while we were gone. Okay, Needed to see my parents. And uh, they're both uh, getting up there in age. They've got some issues that go along with that. And uh, really felt that it was time for me to, to go see them. So thank you. And uh, good to be back. And we have preached concerning this recently. Okay, we actually used this portion of scripture as part of our text in that message. But we want to go... Uh, maybe a little bit more into this tonight and let God speak to our hearts. God begin to deal with my heart. That's one thing about driving somewhere. You got plenty of time to pray and think. Yes. Amen. Amen. And uh, we did a lot of that and God dealt with my heart about this. And we want to preach about that sweet spot. Okay. In sports, this term sweet spot is used in reference to the area uh, around the center mass of a bat or a racket, or a golf club. That is the most effective part with which to hit the ball. You know, if you're going to hit a tennis ball, you want to hit it right in the middle of that racket. Yeah. You don't want to hit it on the frame of the racket. If you're going to go golfing, you want to hit that ball right in the middle of that club. You don't want to hit it, slice it off one way or another, okay, and miss where you're trying to get the ball to go. And we all, those of us that have played baseball, we know you want to hit that ball right with the middle of the fat part of that bat. Yes. Amen? Amen. And you get a, you get a, a further hit, maybe knock it over the fence. Okay. It's in, in reference to sports, that's how it's dealt with that most effective part of the racket or the club or the bat that you are using. And thank God, brother and sister, you and I, can become fruitful yes. and Amen. effective in our Christian walk. Yes. Yes, sir. We can learn not to strike out, not to miss the ball, but to hit the ball. Amen? Yes. And absolutely score for the home team. Amen? But it's also defined, this term is also defined and used in other things. It is defined, and it's kind of similar to what it's dealt with in sports, as the most favorable location or level yes. or area or a combination of these factors for a particular activity or purpose. Yes. Okay. For example, a microphone, normally the sweet spot is right on the tip of it. Okay. If it's a normal mic, 
I know you have different kinds of microphones. You have directional mics, you have area mics, things like this. You have mics that are uh, just for a particular purpose. But normally it's right, that sweet spot is right on the tip of it. Sister Rossi showed us that not too long ago. Okay, brother and sister, uh, either way, it is the most effective spot, the best place. Amen. You know, thank God, brother and sister, we can be in the best place yes. in God. Amen. Yes. Not struggling, not barely making it, Amen. not just uh, 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 fighting battles all the time in our life. But God can bring us to the place in our lives where we are fruitful and we are effective for the Lord and we learn to live our lives in victory. Amen? Amen. That's God's desire for you and I. So how do we get to this point, to this sweet spot in our lives? Well, first of all, very simple, very plain and basic. First of all, if we're going to get in that sweet spot in Christ We've got to be in Christ. Amen? Amen? We've got to get in Christ, brother and sister. If we're going to get to that place that we read about there uh, in the uh, first epistle of John, chapter five, uh, 5, verse 18, we're going to get to that place where the wicked one touches us not, brother and sister. We've got to be in Christ. Yes. We can't do it on our own. We can't uh, fight the enemy in our own ability, in our own strength, in our own intellect. God bless you. Come on in. Good to see you. We are preaching tonight out of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18 about us being in a place where the wicked one touches us not. And we're speaking of how to get to that place. And the first thing is we have to be in Christ. Yes. We must be saved. We must be born again. Amen. There is no other way. You can't take shortcuts. You can't come in some other way, Jesus said. If you do, you are a thief and a robber. Yes. We've got to come in at the door. And we know that Jesus is the door. Amen? Amen. He is the door. He is the one that lets us in. He spoke of himself in John chapter 14 and verse 6. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I don't care what they teach in other religions. I don't care what they teach in other humanistic beliefs, brother and sister, it doesn't matter. There's only one way to be right with God, right. and that is through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peter spoke of it in the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12, and he said, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none of a name unto heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Amen. God didn't make more than one way. He only made one way for any human being to be saved. This gospel is to be preached to every creature, every creature, to everyone upon the face of the earth. I know it may not be allowed in some places, but that's not God's doing. That's man's doing. God still calls mankind accountable for his knowledge of Almighty God. Yes. The book of Romans tells us that we are not ignorant, brother and sister, that even nature conveys the existence and the reality of Almighty God unto you and I. Yes, sir. We are without excuse. Mankind from his very creation has known about God. Adam opened his eyes and God was looking in his face, brother and sister. We uh, need to realize for us to get in that sweet spot, we must be in Christ. Amen. And when we are in Christ, thank God, things change, yes. brother and sister. Yes. Things change when we are Christ. You know, you can know whether or not you're in Christ or not. It's not some vague, that vague thing. I hope I am. I hope I'm a Christian. I hope I'm in Christ. No, brother and sister, we can know whether or not we are in Christ. Jesus was speaking to a man by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And he told this man who came and began to speak to the Lord and inquire of him. He said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, as Jesus told him, he was not speaking of a natural birth, but he was speaking of being born from above. Yes. He was speaking of a spiritual birth that every one of us needs from, from the very beginning. Brother, sister, when Adam Eve, and Eve sinned, they absolutely changed the very nature of mankind. Mankind went from having a sinless godly nature to having a nature of sin and being separated from God but we don't have to stay that way we can get in Christ 
There can be a change in our life. We can be born again. God can change over in nature where we are no longer enemies with God, but now we are reconciled to God. We are sons and daughters of Almighty God, and we have the Spirit of Almighty God abiding in you and I. We can have God living in us. We're in Christ, and Christ is in us, and that is the hope of glory, isn't it? Christ in you and I, the hope of glory. We are changed. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. God makes us different, brother and sister, when we are in Christ. When we are in Christ, there is a change. Well, how do I get in Christ? You're telling me that I must be in Christ. You're telling me that when I am in Christ, there will be a change. Well, how do I get this change in my life? How, Pastor Pope, do I get into Christ? It's simple, my friend. All we have to do is ask. Amen? All we have to do is ask. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. Huh? He said, if you open the door, he will come in and he and the father will sup with you and I and us with them. Brother and sister, all we have to do is ask. And when we ask, we will receive what we ask for. All that the father giveth me, Jesus said, shall come to me and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Yeah. Anyone can come. Anyone can ask. Anyone can enter in, can get in Christ, and allow Christ to come into their hearts and in their lives. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, beginning in verse 28. Come unto me. He invites us, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. You know, it's hard, brother and sister, because we try to do it on our own. We're trying in our own ability to be righteous and to do right. But if we will simply come to Jesus, take his yoke upon you and I, learn of him, brother and sister, experience the grace of Almighty God and the reality of Jesus Christ in our lives, we will find that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Amen. His burden is light. Amen. Romans chapter 10. Man, there's a lot that we could read there. Okay. Beginning, let's just read verse 13. But there's all kind of verses we could read there. He tells us there, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. If you want to be saved, just ask God to save you. Yes. That's all you got to do. Jesus! Save me. Amen. Brother and sister, we don't have to know everything. We don't have to have it all figured out. It's not based on your knowledge and your intellect. But if you will come with a sincere heart and call upon the name of the Lord, ask him to forgive you. Yeah. Ask him to save you. He will do it for you, my friend. And you can enter in to this sweet spot yeah. with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We hope you've already made that decision, but if you've not, you can do it right now. You could uh, you could say this while we're preaching, and maybe you're watching on on uh, uh, Facebook or whatever the case may be. My friend, we can call upon the name of the Lord. We can enter in to that place where the wicked one cannot touch us. And once we are in there, brother and sister, we can stay there. Yes. Are you with me tonight? You don't have to fail. You don't have to go back. You don't have to quit. Once you are in Christ, you can stay in Christ. He wants you to stay there. Do you want to stay with Jesus? Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus wants you to stay with him, and you can. John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. 
and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. Amen. No one can take you away from Jesus. You don't want to go away from Jesus. He doesn't want you to go. It's a settled deal, my friend. You can stay with the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13, Paul writing to some New, some New Testament uh, Gentile believers here. He tells them, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men. Men don't quit. That's what he's telling us, brother and sister. Be strong. You know why he's saying that to us? Because we can do that. Yeah. You can have faith. You can stand fast. Yeah. You don't have to quit. My friend, you can be strong. Yeah. You can be strong. You can make it. You can take it. Yeah. You ain't got to fall out. You ain't got to look back. But you can look forward all the way to the end. Yeah. I'm in the glory land way. Amen. I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah. I'm going to see Jesus. Amen. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know why? Because we can do that. We can stand fast, and we don't have to be entangled with the former life and the former things of our past. Brother and sister, whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. Free indeed. First John chapter 4 and verse 4. Talking about staying, brother and sister, in that sweet spot and how that we can. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. We can stay in that sweet spot, brother and sister. We can stay in Christ. Amen. And we can grow in that place of safety Amen. and protection of Almighty God. We can grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Amen. We can do it, brother and sister. How? Pastor, how am I going to grow? Trust God. Trust Him. Trust His Word. You know, when we trust God's Word... We will obey God's word. We put our trust in God. But sister, faith without works is dead. Let's back up our faith with the things that we do. Let's, let's live God's word. He tells us there in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And this goes right along with our Bible setting here. He said, Whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. I'm diligently seeking God. Yeah. I'm keeping myself. Yeah. That wicked one's not touching me. I'm seeking God. On the contrary, the enemy's not overcoming me, but my God is blessing me. Yeah. Are you here tonight? Yeah. My God is blessing me. My God is protecting me. He is rewarding me. Hallelujah. Yeah. He is rewarding me because I diligent, am diligently seeking him. When we trust, brother and sister, two simple words, trust and obey. We can obey. You can obey God. People, well, you know, nobody can obey God. Yes, they can. Right. You, better not, you better not tell God that. You better not tell the, the, the Bible that. You better not tell people who live the word of God that because you can. Yes. Jesus, Amen. the Bible tells me that I can do all things, Paul wrote through Christ which strengtheneth me. Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Amen. Didn't he say, if you say in this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, Hallelujah. then it would be done for you. Right. You know, some of the biggest things we face, brother and sister, are the, the things that we used to be and the things that we used to do. Sometimes that flesh and those ways of thinking want to come back up. And it seems like a big problem and a big mountain. And I can't overcome it. Yes, you can. Amen. Yes, you can. Amen. You can overcome it because the overcomer is living in you. Amen. The overcomer is living in you, my friend. That said, Jesus, to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. James chapter 4. But he giveth more grace. 
Wherefore he saith, God gives more grace, brother sister, than the devil has sinned. Are you here? God gives more grace. God's grace is greater. His grace is greater. I like that song. Okay, let's go ahead and go on. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. We don't want to be that way. We want to be humble before God. But he gives grace unto the humble. That humble person is diligently seeking God. Amen. That humble person is asking God to help them. Yes. And you know what God's doing? God's helping them. Amen. Amen. He's helping them. And what do you go on to say? Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes. He can't get through. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on now. Amen. He can't get to you. He can't take you away from God. Right. He can't absolutely cause you, brother and sister, to do something that you don't want to do. You can live for God. You can be what God wants you to be. Yes. Amen. You can succeed. Amen. Yes, we can use what God makes available to us. That's why we're here tonight. Those that are watching online. But not only coming to hear the word of God. Okay, Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. We receive instruction in righteousness from the word of God. We receive correction from the word of God. It's all good. When the Lord loves. He chastens and we're not chasing the Lord. We're none of his. We all get it. None of us are immune. Okay, None of us are immune to it, brother and sister. But God loves us. God makes us better. He uses his word and, and uh, the spirit of God. And he's making us more like Jesus. He's making us better every day. We come to church. We learn things. We fellowship and interact with other Christians. We need that. Yes. Iron sharpens iron. Yes. We make one another better. Yes, sir. Amen. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Amen. We make one another better. God uses us to make each other better, brother and sister. Okay. But that's not it. It's not just going to church. We need to have a personal life of a personal devotion and communion with God. We need to read the word of God. Again, we have scripture, daily Bible reading on our Facebook page. You'll scroll down a little bit from this message. You'll see it for today. Take the time. It only takes a, a, a few moments. It doesn't take long. Yes. Read the Bible every day. There's a guide for you there. It'll help you. But not only that, we need to spend time in prayer. Right. Then we're going to come pray in just a moment. I'm getting ready to close here in just a moment. We're going to come and pray here as we normally do. When we do that here, let's do that at home. Let's yes. do that in other places too. Yes. Okay, not just here. Yes. We don't stop being a Christian because we walk out the door. We don't stop being a child of God because we leave the church building. Right. Shouldn't be that way. Right. Yes, sir. You know, we come and God God puts oil in the lamp. Yes. And God yes, absolutely trims it and makes the light brighter. Amen. We don't go out into the darkness to allow the darkness to dim our light. We go out into the darkness to shine our light in that darkness. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness today? Amen. We ain't trying to be like the world. We ain't trying to outcool the world. You don't win people by being just like they are, sitting with them. It's not going to win anybody. Okay? We need to shine some light. They need to see a difference. Come on now. Right. You know, thank God for the word of God. Thank God uh, uh, for the spirit of God dealing with our hearts and, and uh, how God works things out. But there's something I believe that if we would all look throughout our lives, we would see there were people that loved us in spite of us. There were people that were good to us. There were people that had the joy of the Lord. There were people that were genuinely happy. Yes, sir. Yes. Huh? And we saw that in their lives. Yes. That light attracted us. And we, man, I want to be happy. I want to have the joy of the Lord. Right. And we found out it wasn't just them and their personality, but it was God in them. Yes. And we could have the same God living in us. Amen. Amen. Same God living in us, brother, sister. We thank God we made that decision to enter into that sweet spot. That place where things are right between us and the Lord right. and all things are possible, brother and sister. Right. Huh? There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. 
Come on now. We're not walking after the flesh, but after the spirit of almighty God. Amen. And we can continue to walk after the spirit of God. But sister, God is, will bless. God will lead and guide. Brother, sister, he will absolutely work miracles for you and I. You're talking about a good, the good life, brother and sister. We are living the good life with the Lord. Hallelujah. How about it tonight? We're going to come and pray. As our sister comes to the keyboard. Have you entered into that sweet spot? You can tonight. All you've got to do is ask. As we bow our heads and we close our eyes and we come and pray. God bless you tonight is our prayer.